Good evening, everyone. A warm welcome to everyone. Thank you for joining our session. We are back with another interesting session. This is episode number nine, where we will be talking about uh, VPC and all other networking stuff which is required for our AWS Cloud Practitioner certification. Uh, thank you for continuingly attending this bootcamp for us. Uh, let we have an interesting speaker today with us, Monish. Before I pass it on the control to him, let me quickly do a couple of housekeeping stuff. So AWS Madurai Group, welcome you all. Thank you so much for taking out time from your busy schedule. Before I pass it on uh, the control, the stage to our speaker, let me talk about a couple of housekeeping stuff. Please be ensure that this session is conducted in a virtual mode. So you be aware about each other, each of other's competencies, expertise. This user group is full of the beginners as well as the experts. So please allow the stage chance to talk about, help other people to clear their doubts, be welcome and respectful. Allow to be more friendly, patience, and allow the understand the difference, differences in terms of the technical skills, difference in terms of the background or the language. Please ensure that you are very open and kind. And please, in all of your questions and queries posted in the chat, a speaker will look forward to answer everyone. And I'll ensure that all of the questions have been answered before we call a wrap for today. So please be open. Any questions, any queries you have throughout the session, put it in the chat, which may be as basic as how should I start or where are the recording of the sessions. Any sorts of questions, put it in the chat. We'll answer them as and when we get a chance. Again, this is episode number nine. We have done a couple of good episodes in the past. If you are attending for the first time or you have missed a particular episode, don't worry. We have all the recordings which have been published under AWS User Group Madurai YouTube channel as well as AWS User Group India. You can directly search for Cloud Practitioner Bootcamp and you'll get all those videos from there. As well as you can join our Slack channel, bit.ly, AWS, a uh, join AWS MGU. The link is flashing in the screen. All the speakers along with the experts are part of our Slack workspace. So if you have any questions, queries, or anything you need and guidance, please do join our Slack channel. We'll be happy to answer them. So we all know that I mean, this is not new. We have been in the ninth episode. So a couple of things why we are doing this bootcamp. What was our motto? The motto was pretty simple that we want everyone to be cloud certified and have their stepping stone on the cloud. And that's why we started a beginner friendly, more practice stress driven. So you just get more and more hands on. We also have certificate for attendees. The folks who have been joining, we are keeping a close track of it. We'll give you certification of attendance. We'll also give you a chance for hands on lab. So all of our sessions are packed with hands on lab. As well as there is one doubt session, uh, doubt clearing session is already done. A couple of more in the pipeline. So please do join, ask the question within the session, as well as if you have any other questions, put in the Slack, or we'll also have dedicated session. Last but not the least, we'll also have giveaways, giveaways in terms of different modes. We'll have 50% certification voucher off for the folks who perform all the tasks. They've already done the task. Two tasks are already done. Uh, many more are in the pipeline. Please join our work sp uh, Slack workspace announcement channel where we'll keep posting all those different announcements. The, if you want to register it, the link is already there flashing on the screen. So please register it today. With that, let me quickly introduce the speaker for today's session. So today's session will be talking about VPC, networking, security, and compliances all around the AWS networking services where we have Monish. He's a software engineer working at HCL and very much experience when it comes to provisioning and setting up the VPCs. Let me bring Monish on the stage. Hi, Monish. Good evening. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm doing fine. How about you? I'm doing good. Thank you for asking. Yeah. I think our people, I can see there are many people excited are on the line and looking forward to hear from you. So I won't waste much of my time and talking about describing a AWS user group Madura, I can talk about for that for one hour without wasting a single minute. Let me pass on the control to you. Best of luck. And let me bring your screen on here. So stage is here. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. On behalf of AWS user group Madurai, I welcome you all to the ninth session of AWS Cloud Practitioner Bootcamp on VPC and networking, security, and compliance. Without wasting any time, we'll go on to the slide. OK, we'll see about VPC right now. Uh, VPC is a virtual private cloud. Amazon VPC lets you to provision a logically isolated section of AWS cloud where we can launch AWS resources in a virtual network that we can define. 
like uh, virtual uh, private cloud is just a, a separation of uh, resources from your uh, actual organization like uh, we we can group our resources uh, the entire organization's uh, resources uh, as public resources and private resources so this grouping uh, are of resources are known as subnets like uh, these are these are subnets are just the range of ip addresses in our vpc these subnets control either the resources are publicly or privately available so we'll talk about the public facing resources for the traffic from the public internet to flow into uh, into and out of our vpc we must attach the internet gateway like basically internet gateway is like a doorman standing in front of the door uh, any data which flows from and to the internet uh, flows through the internet gateway as you can see in this image uh, you can see the internet gateway is standing right in front of our vpc any data which is passing from our resources to the internet or uh, the data which is passing from the internet to the uh, vpc should be passing through the internet gateway so uh, we can uh, blindly like assume that internet gateway is as a doorman okay so we are speaking about the private resources to allow access to the private resources we uh, we want a virtual private gateway which allows traffic only from an approved network so uh, public resources can be anything like uh, which is uh, pub, uh, directly available to the public and private resources are uh, only uh, uh, limited access to the developers or uh, the uh, members of the organization so this is the just the difference between the private and the public resources this private gateway allows us to create the vpn connection uh, between the private network to the vpc uh, so uh, it, when when we, in the case of a public resource we had an internet gateway uh, in, uh, in in case of a private resource we need a private gateway which uh, which establishes a vpn connection from the uh, private network to the vpc to achieve a private and dedicated connection to those resources aws has a solution called uh, aws direct connect uh, using aws direct connect we can uh, achieve a connection to uh, to those uh, private resources this helps in meeting compliance needs and tackle bandwidth issues obviously when we are using cloud obviously we are, the customers would have been thinking about security the two main concerns of customers using cloud is uh, bandwidth and uh, this thing uh, security so uh, this uh, uh, amazon uh, like provide solution seamless solutions uh, to tackle all those uh, issues so working of vpc a route table there will be a, a route table inside vpc which contains set of rules to determine the direction of traffic flow from and to the vpc this route table is just uh, like a set of rules like uh, if the uh, packet coming from internet uh, has a, a certain rule and uh, is from a particular de destination it can pass through the vpc otherwise it cannot the same applicable uh, applies to the reverse rule also a subnet is implicitly associated with the main route table like when we uh, when we create a default subnet it uh, it is defaultly uh, associated with the main route table so we can specifically associate a route table to uh, subnet and define the subnet particular uh, routes like uh, for example these subnet particular routes are uh, for example these uh, uh, these resources must access only these parts of internet so th these are the particular rules of the routing table the gateways and interfaces ranges are, are specified in the table uh, yeah obviously like uh, when we want to reach a destination uh, we have to uh, find, uh, provide the route to, uh, through which the packet has to travel and we can uh, we can connect one vpc to other vpc using vpc peering connection between two vpcs and enable to uh, it to route traffic privately we can also create transit gateway to use it as an interconnection between vpcs as we already said this uh, routing table does not even uh, does not like only provide the connection between the outside internet and your uh, private connection but also we can uh, provide a connection we, are, we can establish a connection between uh, two other vpcs running inside the same organization so uh, the transit gateway comes into action over there access control list yeah as i obviously said like security is the main concern of uh, cloud computing uh, if a customer has to produce their data to the cloud uh, they obviously need some uh, security uh, to be established over the uh, cloud so uh, one part of security is uh, access control list 
each packet from internet gets checked against acl so acl is uh, like a stateless uh, uh, thing okay like it doesn't remember uh, which packet came from which uh, destination it it just plainly checks uh, the every packet which flows through it uh, whether uh, like acl has a set of rules like allow and deny so if uh, if a packet uh, comes through uh, comes through it and uh, if uh, for example the rule uh, specifies as allow then the acl will allow the packet into vpc otherwise if the rule is uh, specified as deny then the packet gets denied and uh, the packet gets dropped off acl are set of rules that decide whether the packet has permissions to enter or leave the subnet yeah obviously like uh, for example the acl has rules like uh, if the packet is coming from this uh, destination uh, it should be implicitly denied or if it's uh, coming from this destination it should be accepted uh, like i'll say one common example for this for example uh, imagine there are set of developers and uh, a set of sales person sales person may might have uh, access to uh, another entirely different set of uh, resources and uh, like uh, this thing developers have uh, access to entire set of different resources like imagine if a sales person wants access to uh, any of the uh, developers resource that's not right right so like uh, the sales person should not have access to these uh, de- developers data and uh, and uh, the reverse is also applicable like the developer must not have access to sales data and, and it's it may be confidential to the sales team so uh, like uh, a packet from a sales team must not uh, must not you know re- uh, reach uh, the developers resources and uh, a packet from a uh, developers team must not reach the uh, sales team so these uh, these rules would be specified by the access control list and going on to the security groups um, security groups will be providing uh, instance level uh, network security when uh, thinking of acls it will be uh, providing a packet level security uh, while thinking of security groups uh, this security groups will be providing an instance level uh, network security uh, security groups provide an inst- uh, instance level uh, access uh, and different instances can set rules on which packet may enter or re- leave them it may sound like it may sound like acls and the security groups are all the same but it has a d- difference we'll we'll see in the f- upcoming slide every ec2 instance automatically comes with a security group i'll show all these in a um, hands on session for now uh, you just uh, remember that uh, every e- ec2 instance automatically comes with a uh, security group by default uh, these security groups have block call so uh, i already told like uh, these security groups or uh, or acls have two rules called uh, allow and block so um, like uh, these security groups have a default uh, rule like uh, to block every uh, packets flowing through them um, like we have to if for example we need to specify any uh, like particular packet uh, rules we have to specify like uh, we have to go and modify the security group yeah um acls as a security groups yeah you would you would have been uh, like uh, wondering what's the difference between acls and security groups one key difference between security groups and acls uh, is that acls are stateless whereas security groups are stateful uh, stateless in the sense uh, like acls do, do not remember any packets which are flowing through them it's uh, whenever a packet comes in the the, it, the the job of acl is just to check what is uh, going on that's all you know it doesn't remember like okay fine this is the packet which i have previously visited okay you are allowed you are denied it doesn't remember anything well whereas a security group is not like that you are know, like the security groups have a inbuilt memory and you, uh, it it remembers which packet flows through it acls allow all inbound and outbound uh, outbound traffic whereas security groups denies all inbound traffic and allows all outbound traffic um as i already said uh, these acls and security groups are uh, just like a doorman standing in front of your door so um, so like uh, imagine that acl acl which uh, acl allows all inbound and outbound if for example uh, acl rule is to allow everyone so it will allow everyone like uh, every packets it will allow like inbound and outbound traffic you know if, if a packet enters the vpc or uh, exists the vpc it will allow everything by default whereas a security groups you know like it denies all inbound traffic 
whatever you know whatever packets come to the vpc it will be denied by default and allows all outbound traffic uh, this is the default you know like uh, all uh, doorman also used to do the same like uh, if if uh, if the person is known by the doorman he will allow insight whereas when you go inside the room or uh, uh, if you go inside uh, the room like uh, you can uh, like you can freely exit at any point of time so this is the basic uh, difference between acls and security group. yeah and coming on to the security in uh, cloud computing and security in aws there is uh, something called as shared responsibility model like um, as uh, as part of aws yeah, amazon also provides all set of uh, security measures to provide the data of uh, i mean to protect the data of the users like both the aws and customers are responsible for the security of data in the cloud yeah obviously like um, uh, for example when uh, like uh, take an uh, example of uh, you building a house when you build a house the, the contractor is obviously uh, responsible for building a strong foundation for your house yeah obviously like he has to build strong walls he has to build strong uh, roofs and all to uh, avoid the building collapse uh, and also like uh, after okay the contractor has done a great job the builder has done a great job you uh, you cannot leave uh, you cannot leave this uh, entirely to the contractor's uh, job right you only have to pro- uh, you know like uh, protect your own data so what you will do uh, you are taking the house example itself you will uh, you know you will attach locks you will attach you know uh, different types of securities for uh, you know uh, to protect the valuable assets inside your house the same the same is uh, in the case of aws so uh, the customers are responsible for the security in the cloud and aws is responsible for uh, for the security of the cloud yeah the uh, aws is um, like aws is providing the foundation for the cloud uh, platform so obviously they will provide you know like they will provide the security for uh, you know uh, like uh, they'll obviously provide the security for their platform as a customer you have to be responsible for your uh, uh, you know your valuable assets in the cloud which you are placing in the cloud for example you have to uh, configure uh, you know strict firewall rules you have to uh, uh, you know like uh, uh, configure a, a load balancer you have to do everything on your part to you know secure your data the foundation the you know like uh, the foundation would be provided by aws and the strong, uh, foundation is strong so this is the shared responsibility model uh, so as i already said uh, the customer is re- responsible for security in the cloud uh, whereas uh, like for example uh, this data application and operating system whatever you um, uh, you apply in the cloud is uh, you know like uh, responsible for uh, this, the security of these is responsible by you uh, when uh, when coming to the aws part it's responsible for, for the security of the cloud yeah the aws is providing you the platform so uh, like um, for example the hypervisor the network the physical layers uh, uh, aws obviously has a uh, data centers amazon has obviously has data centers centers right the, those uh, center physical the security of those data centers network security of those uh, those data centers all, uh, uh, will be provided by aws this is a more uh, more uh, detailed uh, uh so shared responsibility model where uh, wherein uh, like the customer is responsible for the data i uh, you know uh, security of their data platform applications and uh, identity access management uh, he is also responsible for the operating system network and firewall configuration as already said firewall is the most important thing when you are placing uh, things in i mean your data in cloud uh, because like uh, yeah, there will be obviously malicious uh, attackers you know uh, waiting to uh, you know steal your data so you have to be responsible enough and uh, uh, provide a strong firewall configuration uh, and also like uh, client side data encryption and data integrity authentication must also be done uh, there's client side data encryption and where uh, and the server side encryption you have to do both and coming on to the aws side it's uh, responsible for the security of the cloud uh, it provides the security for the software uh, which uh, which are you know like uh, obviously seeing through the eyes which is a platform for the aws uh, it also provides uh, security for compute storage database and networking uh, it it provides a physical security yeah this is the physical security physical security is the global infrastructure 
uh, it provides security for the global infrastructure then the regions availability zones and uh, edge location these are all would be covered by the, the security of these all will be covered by aws so this is uh, this is a shared responsibility model and coming to user permissions and access yeah like uh, you, uh, when coming to access we have already uh, known about access control list so um, access control lists are uh, not only enough for uh, you know providing entire security to the uh, data present in the cloud so when uh, when we create an aws uh, account we are giving the root user privileges uh, this root user privileges will be having uh, you know the privileges of uh, you know you have the entire access to your own data like you are the root user and uh, you know you do, you don't have any restrictions you have complete access to your data uh, and uh, you know like uh, this root users uh, you know like uh, will create other uh, user accounts and he would be able to you know like access the data with the uh, restriction the root user is the owner of the account and logs in with multi factor authentication yeah uh, multi factor authentication is very uh, you know like uh, crucial you know like uh, this multi factor authentication is playing a major part in providing the security of the software um as you already know like um, uh, you might have been aware of this uh, authenticator apps where you like uh, they provide a uh, temporary code uh, you have to you know like after entering your credentials uh, after verifying those credentials you have to again uh, you know like provide your uh, temporary you know codes uh, uh, temporary codes to access into your account this is a multi factor authentication like the, your the, the username and password is your first factor of authentication and your uh, uh, authentication codes are the, your second factor of authentication like uh, this is only two factor authentication you can uh, you know for uh, securing more and more you can uh, keep on adding uh, factors of authentication like your biometrics uh, these are all uh, like an example of uh, multi factor authentication access and control any resources in the, in the account uh, it can give uh, control to other users using aws iam as you already know um, uh, aws iam is uh, already has been taken as a session in our user group mm, this uh, uh, iam will be providing which user should be accessing which uh, data in our data, in our cloud yeah uh, coming to distributed denial of service attacks these uh, these are the most prominent attacks in uh, the previous times like wherein you slow down the server like slow down or shut down the uh, application's ability to function properly imagine you are waiting for one resource you have entered for example uh, maybe google dot so when you have uh, you are a legitimate user you are a normal user you are trying to surf google mm, imagine a hacker or a malicious user is trying to attack google Uh, wherein he uh, uh, wherein he sends a malicious packet he tries to slow down the application uh, um, so uh, he obviously he'll overwhelm the system to a point that it can no longer operate normally like he'll be providing you know uh, like you are giving this one request the malicious user may may have been given like thousands of requests like obviously when uh, thousands of requests are sent at the same time you know sent parallelly uh, obviously the server would have been slowed down so that is the, the distributed denial of service attack like this legitimate user like i am a, a normal user uh, trying to surf uh, a thing uh, like i am not able to access the service but uh, like it's uh, being entirely slowed down by another malicious user this is only denial of service like uh, this uh, hack uh, like uh, malicious users uh, you know leverage other machines in internet to cooperate with the attack and make it as a distributed attack yeah this is a very clever trick uh, performed by uh, malicious users like they will uh, you know convert other machines in over the internet as zombie machines you know uh, they these zombie machines will do the task for uh, the malicious user yeah, like for example uh, uh, the uh, entire attack cannot be trusted on uh, malicious users uh, system you know his uh, his uh, his system may not be able to uh, properly do that uh, you know uh, attacking a whole huge infrastructure might not be possible so uh, when it comes to you know like uh, uh, then what he does uh, what he or she does is like uh, uh, he'll you know leverage other machines you know like uh, he'll gain access to other machines in the internet or the same network 
uh, the, once he gets uh, access to uh, every other uh, in, uh, you know systems in the network he'll you know like uh, he'll try to do the same attack on uh, the same website uh, you know just uh, you know like the the count is more you know like instead of doing in a single system the attacker does it in uh, many system uh, so obviously like uh, the uh, the application or the uh, website would, might have been slow down so this is the de- distributed denial of service attack so types of the ddos attacks um, as we can see um, is udp uh, udp flood attacks udp flood attacks is uh, destination forging for example uh, i am trying to access a website uh, the malicious user uh, like uh, has an intention for example i am trying to access a website a um, so the malicious users uh, target is website b okay so like uh, when i am trying to access uh, uh, website a the malicious users come in between uh, he'll forge my destination i know like my packet will not be delivered to uh, website a or application a uh, instead he will forge my uh, you know like forge my request to uh, application b so obviously like uh, i am not intended to visit uh, you know like uh, website b uh, whereas you know like uh, the attackers uh, uh, you know my thought process is achieved no he can you know like uh, he can uh, uh, you know try to slow down instead of using uh, his own system for that attack so this is udp flood attack and http level attacks yeah uh, imagine we are giving one request to a uh, website a same website a we are giving one http request imagine what happens if uh, like um, thousands you know like uh, thousands 10000s of requests are being passed at the same time you know like uh, e- even when uh, like um, in a fraction of second if the thousands and ten thousands of uh, you know like requests are being flooded to the server how can the server you know manage the, this the same uh, so obviously i cannot manage and it will be slowed down uh, the next thing is slow loris attacks uh, pretending to have a slow bandwidth for example uh, imagine i am standing in uh, in a shop uh, like uh, imagine i am standing in a, ba- a bakery um the first you know like i am standing uh, you know like in 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 a line uh, i am standing in the second position like uh, the first user the, the person standing in the first of the line you know like um, he he pretends to be you know very slow in his uh, task okay like uh, he order uh, uh, like he order that uh, uh, you know whatever his requirements very slowly obviously i will get you know like i'll get uh, very much uh, upset you know like uh, why is this guy you know like taking so much amount of time that is that that exactly is called as a slow roller, low risk attack so like um, the i am a legitimate user i am you know like um, i am a legitimate user i am a normal user trying to you know like buy something from a website or you know like uh, or an application the uh, the malicious user pretends to be you know like uh, having a very slow bandwidth he'll occupy the entire uh, space of that website and uh, yeah, you know like the normal users like me could not be able to access the website so these are the types of ddos attack and coming to ddos attack solutions when coming to ddos attack solutions uh, we can configure a security group for udp flood yeah security groups uh, is a efficient solution for uh, you know uh, preventing udp flood attacks we can also configure a uh, elastic load balancer for slow load risk attacks yeah uh, like uh, load balancer the task of a load balancer is to uh, you know balance the load uh, coming to the server so when we configure a load balancer in a such a way that like if the slow request you know like uh, the malicious user is pretending to have a slow bandwidth right so he can be separated from the other users and uh, you know like the website can be seamlessly uh, you know accessed AWS uh, Shield uh, is uh, one of the solution uh, with uh, AWS WAF. WAF is a web application firewall. So uh, this uh, web application firewall can be used for more sophisticated attacks. Like uh, uh, this web application firewall has uh, extensive machine learning capabilities to identify the attack vectors. Uh, for example, these uh, web application firewalls would have been trained to, you know, uh, identify which is a normal request and which is an abnormal request. so uh, when this uh, uh, like uh, web application firewall is uh, trained in a such a way uh, when um, when a malicious or a abnormal uh, uh, you know packet comes 
it will uh, you know efficiently stop the packet okay you know you are not access you know you are not allowed to access the website so uh, like uh, uh, by this the, the ddos attacks can be you know efficiently prevented yeah uh, when when it comes to you know security measures in cloud um, obviously like uh, encryption is one of the key uh, you know uh, like uh, key part of uh, maintaining your uh, data okay like uh, you are, uh, if for example i am uh, storing my uh, sales data uh, details i am i am storing my sales reports in my cloud uh, what if you know like uh, what if my cloud is you know like uh, my network is not encrypted no my my network is not you know safe okay like it is uh, uh, you know vulnerable to attackers so what uh, what will uh, you know the malicious user do he will come uh, he'll access my network uh, then he'll access my data and uh, the data would also be in a plain text you know it will be uh, human readable so uh, when it's readable na he'll uh, he can uh, steal the data so that that is what you know like uh, that's why we uh, encryption comes into a part when when we encrypt the data then uh, the data uh, would be you know transformed into unreadable format so when it's an un unreadable format obviously like uh, the uh, malicious user cannot access our data uh, this encryption can be you know like um, uh, there are very uh, very sophisticated techniques you know for uh, achieving this encryption you know uh, we have uh, you know uh, like key based encryption methods we have uh, many encryption methods you know like just to protect the data you know, for example uh, key based uh, uh, in key based encryption we have a public key and private key pair uh, uh, we would have this uh, private uh, public key the data would be locked by the keys and uh, a particular keys only uh, can be able to unlock the data uh, that's what uh, the uh, like otherwise if if it's not unlocked the data would be in a like very messed up format only when we have the key we can unlock the data that is decrypting the data and then we can uh, you know access the data in the normal form uh, when it comes to encryption there are two types encryption at rest and encryption in transit uh, encryption at rest uh, aws has a great solution called aws key management service that is kms uh, this kms helps in managing encryption keys that are used in encrypting data as i already said like uh, in this key based encryption systems um like uh, we have to store you know even though if it's a key to uh, encrypt or decrypt your data these keys also have to be uh, maintained properly um, obviously like uh, when ca coming back to your home example na like uh, when when coming to your home examples you cannot keep your key in a very insecure place you no know, like uh, you cannot keep uh, your keys in like uh, a place where everyone can be you know accessible you keep so uh, you keep your house keys in somewhere a personal space or a private space okay so this uh, this personal space is called uh, the solution uh, provided for personal space by uh, amazon is called as kms so encryption in transit uh, this uh, for example uh, encryption at rest deals with data uh, you know static data uh, this data is uh, you know resting in the database server it's not being moved anywhere so encryption in transit means like the data is being actively uh, you know like uh, actively being exchanged from one uh, you know from one service to another uh, so uh, the, the data would be like obviously like when uh, the data in, uh, if a data is in, in transit it has to be secured so uh, data in movement between one service to another service as i already said this is uh, like encryption in transit um uh, uh, you already have would have been known uh, this secure socket layer you uh, uh, at some point of uh, in your lifetime you would have uh, you know like you would have come across this word called ssl this is a very very fa famous technique you know to uh, protect the data uh, you know protect the data in transit uh, yeah this uh, certificates you know certificates uh, will be able to you know verify the authenticity of the website so uh, like uh, this ssl and uh, uh, certificates are a efficient way to encrypt the data in transit so these are the uh, now we will see some of the products provided by amazon to you know like uh, provide security to your uh, data uh, when you are providing your uh, data you are trusting uh, amazon so uh, obviously they have to provide some uh, products and uh, you know they have to uh, Uh, give trust uh, give trust to uh, like safeguard your data so uh, one of uh, the product is called amazon inspector 
this helps to improve security and compliance of aws deployed applications um, so uh, like uh, it also uh, uh, runs automated security assessments against the infrastructure uh, it uh, this amazon inspector checks for deviations of security practices and uh, exposes of uh, instances so uh, like um, it uh, whenever uh, you configure data in an inspector you know you, you configure your application in an inspector this inspector you know like uh, will automatically you know like uh, will keep on uh, assessing your uh, the security of your application so uh, this is uh, this is what called as an amazon inspector then uh, this uh, net network config uh, configuration reachability piece uh, this is an amazon agent and uh, security assessment service is also being done uh, yeah the next product is amazon guard duty this amazon guard duty actively uh, analyzes um, this continuous stream of metadata generated from account yeah when you are when you are being you know when you are using your account uh, when you are a user you know like uh, when you are providing some service to other customers or you know you are running a service on your own uh, obviously like uh, metadata would be generated this metadata would be like uh, uh, the amazon guard duty is the duty is to uh, you know monitor this uh, metadata uh, which is being continuously generated this uh, guard duty uses integ uh, integrated threat intelligence known as malicious ip addresses um, uh, anomaly detection and machine learning to identify threats more accurately uh, yeah uh, as i already said uh, amazon has been doing a great job in uh, uh, deploying machine learning to every of its products you know to pro provide an intelligent service so uh, guard duty is uh, one of one of such products which uses uh, efficiently uses machine learning uh, you know to uh, identify threats uh, more accurately this uh, guard duty runs independently from other services you know like you can run guard duty in your background and uh, you know like uh, this da doesn't affect your uh, the normal functioning of your application um, yeah this is the last point uh, like uh, it won't affect the performance of your existing infrastructure you can you know like you can uh, pro provide an ec2 instance which is being running but uh, this guard duty would be uh, you know running in the background and it doesn't affect the performance of your ec2 instance the next uh, product is uh, amazon certificate manager which is popularly known as acm this acm uh, handles the complexity of creating storing and renewing public and private ssl uh, tls uh, x5.9 certificates and keys that prot uh, protect your aws websites and applications uh, you can provide certificates for for integrated aws services either by issuing directly with acm or importing third party certificates into acm uh, system yeah when you have uh, you know like uh, when you uh, visit any application or a website uh, you you would have come across a word called certificate this uh, this certificate you know like uh, uh, this certificates only like um, provides the integrity of the website you know it uh, for example uh, when i am visiting some website uh, this certificate uh, provides uh, provides me the details uh, like this website is only trustworthy this uh, this is the original website so uh, th that is the information provided by the uh, certificate uh, all these certificates will be managed by amazon certificate manager the next product is amazon macy uh this amazon macy fully ma manages data security and privacy service that uses machine learning and pattern matching to discover and protect sensitive data in aws as already said uh, amazon has been uh, uh, actively integrating uh, machine learning into their products uh, amazon macy, macy is uh, one of uh, such products which uses machine learning and pattern matching to you know like uh, identify what's being abnormal in your application or uh, you know like what's going out of your hand uh, this uh, macy provides an uh, inventory of uh, amazon s3 buckets which are unencrypted and publicly accessed or shared outside the next product is amazon detective uh, amazon detective makes it easy to analyze investigate and quickly identify the root cause of uh, potential security issues or uh, suspicious activities like um, this uh, we would have obviously when uh, when you configure a website you uh, uh, for the ease of the developer uh, we would have configured logs right these logs you know like uh, these logs are used to you know uh, identify what's going wrong uh, 
uh, you know what's wrong going wrong in my website you know like uh, who is trying to access what uh, which part of the website this is only the i know like uh, the normal functioning of the uh, log the similar uh, uh, you know similar functionality is achieved by uh, amazon detective it will be uh, you know able to analyze investigate and uh, identify the root cause of the potential uh, security issue for example if i am like for uh, if a malicious user is uh, you know uh, 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 giving a denial of service attack to your application this amazon detective will be able to uh, uh, identify that okay some uh, some user is uh, you know like uh, trying to uh, dos your server you know he is trying to slow down your server so it will alert the website owner or the application owner this uh, detective uh, also uses machine learning statistical analysis, analysis and graph theory to build link set of data and that enables you to easily conduct faster and more efficient efficient security investigations so this uh, uh, aws artifact is uh, uh, another product uh, this is a, a central resource for compliance related information that matters uh, your very critical data uh, your very you know like uh, very uh, critical business related data uh, will be handled by uh, yeah, I mean, aws artifact this provides on demand access to aws security and compliance reports and online agreements we'll now see uh, an hands on uh, demo for uh, you know configuring vpcs and security in vpc yeah and uh, now i am going uh, i am logging on to my uh, aws management console yeah this is my console home first uh, first and first we will be uh, configuring our vpc uh, so i am searching vpc in the search box yeah this is the vpc yeah uh, firstly i am going to uh, you know find what are uh, the vpcs configured by me so i am going on to uh, uh, your vpcs as i already said uh, aws uh, uh, amazon provides a default vpc uh, when you are you know creating your own account so this is the uh, this is the default uh, vpc provided by uh, aws as you can see uh, this uh, vpc is provided you know like uh, it has uh, the dhcp options set it has a routing table it has uh, also an uh, access control list okay we'll now create our own vpc so uh, i am clicking on the create vpc button now this uh, this vpc uh, for example i am now in the north virginia location so uh, i'd be able to create a vpc in this location okay so i am creating a vpc uh, i am giving a name to my vpc example uh, i am creating a vpc called as demo okay this is uh, this is the name of my vpc you know you can uh, you can name your vpc according to your business name uh, now i am uh, this is the ipv4 cidr uh, we will be going on uh, with the ip address like uh, 10000 slash uh, 16 this is the uh, like uh, the network address which i am giving to my vpc um like whatever resource which i configure into my vpc will be allocated some network address within this uh, address range this is uh, like 10.0.0.0 this uh, network range uh, my any of my resources will be allocated so uh, and I also i am not uh, you know specifying any cid ipv6 cid uh, block as of now um now i am going to create my vpc hold on ah uh, yeah now my vpc is created right now and uh, see it has you know like uh, the dhcp has been set the route table also has been set uh, the access control list has also been set okay we will now go on to subnets we will uh, we have created uh, a vpc now now we have to you know like configure the subnets which have been you know like uh, which sit inside my vpc Uh, these are the subnets which are uh, you know default uh, you know by default available uh, given by amazon so uh, uh, for example uh, these are uh, you know like uh, the subnets will be available each in one availability zone okay so we will be you know like uh, creating a subnet once 
yeah i am selecting my vpc uh, which is demo uh, i am not creating a vpc uh, you know like i am not creating a subnet in my default uh, vpc i am creating a, a subnet in my demo uh, vpc okay so uh, like associated vp vpc cid as uh, as i already tell uh, like uh, 10.0.0.0 uh, you know like uh, will be uh, the this uh, the starting address you know like the ip address for uh, every of my resources inside my cidr okay so this is the first subnet i am going to create so for example i am going to create a, a subnet called as uh, imagine demo is my company name and i am creating a subnet name called as you know like a subnet is just like a partition you know like uh, there, there should be resources right there should be resources which are, uh, which could be you know like uh, access only to a certain department and uh, resources which uh, it should be accessible to another set of department so i am creating a subnet called as uh, for example sales so this uh, this subnet is specifically for sales persons uh, they can you know like access uh, the uh, what are uh, the resources and instances running inside this uh, uh, sales subnet and uh, you know like uh, without any uh, rules configured they cannot access you know like uh, the other uh, subnets uh, like information or uh, you no know, instances uh, and i am going on to select the availability zone for now i'll create an, uh, you know uh, like the availability zone as us east only and uh, in ci uh, i am going to you know like um, where the entire you know like the entire um, ip address range for uh, you know like my vpc is 10.0.0 and uh, now i am going to provide uh, the ip address range for my subnet you know uh, for uh, with, with this address you know uh, the resources running inside my sub, uh, subnet will be getting uh, you know like uh, the ip addresses from this range so i am again providing a uh, you know ip address range as 10.0.0.0/ slash 24 so i am uh, providing this uh, uh, ip address range to my resources inside this uh, uh, you know th this subnet so like okay uh, i'll go on to uh, you know create the subnet yeah hold on yeah this uh, this subnet has been created see yeah this sales see uh, the the subnet which i have created has uh, been show showing up here and uh, this is the you know like um, the the ip address range of the subnet uh, and also we have like 251 uh, available ipv4 addresses which means like uh, you can allocate 251 resources inside your subnet and also it is in the availability zone which i have mentioned so this is the uh, subnet uh, uh, like which i have configured now we will go on to you know configure our internet gate as i already said uh, internet gateway is uh, you know just like a doorman you know doorman standing in front of you, you know like he'll uh, you know like allow or you know deny the packets which are coming to our vpc okay so first i know like i'll be, i'll be creating my own internet gateway the name uh, name tag would be uh, the, uh, this is a user defined uh, name tag uh, i'm giving it as a demo ig and i'm creating it as a uh, this thing now this uh, internet gateway would be created but it will not be attached to any of the vpcs you know it will not be attached to even to the default vpc so in order to attach you know like in order to say this uh, internet gateway to you know like uh, for example in order to configure this uh, ig to my vpc i am giving uh, this uh, you know like attached to a vpc so i am searching my vpc like which is the demo right uh, so i am uh, attaching my uh, internet gateway to this vpc and i'm clicking on attach internet gateway yeah and uh, now this internet gateway has been attached to my vpc so we'll now go on to route table so uh, and then we'll uh, create a route table from the scratch hmm. this is uh, the route table's name so i am giving it as demo route table and the vpc which uh, i am configuring it as uh, like uh, the demo i am attaching it to the demo vpc now i am creating the route table 
yeah the demo route table has been created successfully okay so this is a, just like we have uh, created a routing table and uh, now uh, the duty of us is to you know add routes to this routing table so uh, so first uh, you know like uh, we have to go on to edit routes no hold on yeah uh yeah, while going on to edit routes uh, this is uh, this is the page where you can add uh, custom routes to your routing table so i am adding a route called this uh, i am giving a thing called 0.0.0.0/0 which means allow everything you know like uh, every uh, ip address uh, this meaning is every ip address okay so i am attaching it to internet gateway okay so uh, what i am basically saying is uh from from the internet or to the internet any uh, any device can be you know like uh, transmitting their packets this is what the rule which i am defining uh, for example uh, you know like you can uh, define your your own custom rules like for example packets from uh, sales department must not go to development department or uh, you know like uh, packets from development department must not go to sales department you can uh, you know uh, edit your uh, you know you, you can add custom rules here now i am saving my changes here i am you know like this route has been created successfully and now i am going on to um, so yeah uh, like on the vpc side everything is uh, you know fine we have, uh, like we have you know uh, we have created our vpc we have created our subnets we have also configured our internet gateways we have also configured route table route table in the sense like we can uh, we also define how Uh, we we have ordered uh, we also added a custom route uh, like uh, this um, like uh, which uh, uh, which ip address which uh, must be able to uh, you know access the other ip address so we have also defined uh, uh, this thing you know like uh, we have also defined the uh, routing rule now going on you know like uh, now i'll be adding this uh, ec2 instance i'll be adding this uh, ec2 instance to this uh, vpc now yeah i'm going on searching ec2 yeah this is my ec2 instance i am i am now going to configure my ec2 instance uh, first i'm going to launch instance yeah i'm giving a name to it mm, i'm giving it as uh, demo i'm giving the name as a demo ec2 uh, and i am now you know configuring the uh, you know operating systems of the ec2 instance um, i am giving it as a microsoft okay it can be anything you know it can be uh, this ec2 instance can be according to your own needs so here for uh, for example i am giving it as a uh, windows instance um yeah and also like um, uh, this uh, you can see if you are a student and you are learning you know like you are just practicing uh, cloud environment you can go on for the free tier uh, or if you you know if you want to you know uh, suit uh, this uh, cloud computing or uh, this uh, you want to suit to this uh, aws into your business you can go on for your uh, higher uh, you know like uh, higher ranges okay this is the instance type the details would be uh, as follows uh, t2 micro uh, it contains one cpu and one gigabytes of memory uh, uh, okay now we'll go, be going on to uh, this key pair this key pair is only used to log in to our system like uh, i have created a, you know a key pair called as uh, ugm uh, mdu and i'm using this key pair to log into my ec2 instance and going on to the network settings uh, like this uh, this uh, this ec2 instance uh, will be stand alone for now uh, in order to you know associate this uh, ec2 instance with my uh, vpc i have to edit here here uh, see the default you know like uh, the default vpc which uh, my ec2 instance is associated is the default vpc so i am going on and changing uh, this vpc settings to demo which uh, the this is the demo vpc which i have created now so i am selecting here 
uh, and also like i am associating this uh, uh, this ec2 instance with my sales uh you can i know like if uh, for example uh, if i have created uh, other departments like uh, development i can also you know associate this uh, ec2 instance with uh, any other subnets for now i am associating this uh, uh, you know this instance to the sales department and also like uh, auto assign public ip we, yeah, we have to enable this uh, to you know like uh, have a uh, you know for uh, for the deployment purposes and yeah uh, here comes the security options for the ec2 instances like uh, for example i am creating a new security group um, yeah uh, and uh, like uh, this uh, security groups would be you know like uh, uh, given here uh, you can configure your own security groups and now i am launching the instance they yeah, uh, give it a minute to launch yeah if uh, this uh, no like uh, this uh, launch has been initiated we will see now yeah see my uh, ec2 instance has been you know like uh, the state is uh, now pending uh, the you know the system is being booting up you know like uh, we'll see you know we'll see how it is being associated yeah as you can see uh it has been you know like uh, assigned a public ipv4 address uh, you know like uh, this ipv uh, uh, we can you know associate it with the, uh, this with any website name and uh, you know for private access you know this is the private ipv4 address as you you know uh, we have given the ip address range for the sales subnet as uh, 10.0.0.0/24 so uh, within that uh, subnet it is uh, automatically allocated uh, you know like allocating me an ip address called 10.0.0.195 and also like uh, yeah these are the host names and uh, other details of this uh, uh, ec2 instance and uh, this ec2 instance would be associated to my uh, you know like uh, uh, vpc this uh, private vpc and uh, you know like uh, you you can you know keep on adding ec2 instance according to your own uh yeah this is the uh, you know like um, uh this is the hands on for uh, vp creating vpcs and you can also find other uh, you know uh, uh, security products like uh, guard duty yeah see here. yeah you can also find uh, other uh, you know like uh, security products which i have mentioned in my uh, you know presentations Uh, all these, you know, like um, can be found here. May see uh, everything could be find, uh, you know, like uh, according to your needs, you can configure uh, 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 the Amazon products in into your uh, VPC. And yeah, this uh, this is uh, we have come to an end of my presentation. Yeah, host, you can take over. Thanks, Monish. I think that was uh, really great the way you explained the VPCs and rest of the security concept. Uh, I think that really helps. Uh, I would request if you have any questions and queries, please put it in the chat. Uh, in meantime, let me uh, share my screen and talk about a couple of things. But please, if you have any questions and queries, post in the chat. Or if you are watching it as a recording mode, please put it in the form of a comments. We'll ensure that we do reply. Or for sure, you can join our Slack. We are also part of Slack Workspace. The link is flashing on the screen. So, couple of things why you should look forward for AWS User Group Madurai. So, AWS User Group Madurai, it's what I its uniqueness or why you should join. A couple of things, right? First, you get to exp uh, join and network with AWS Exports. As well as different community members, we have our co-organizer of AWS Madurai, who is an ML hero. So you can talk to such expert people out there. As well as there are new people who are pretty starting their journey. It's a mix of audience across different scales of competency. So you should look forward to it. Uh, you will also, as a part of the community, you'll also get special access to AWS contents and event updates, swags and vouchers as defined by AWS User Group India. There's a highly communicative. Uh, community is there, so you get knowledge sharing, different kinds of learning, explore how different certifications are like. As you can see, this bootcamp, 
and last but not the least but you also get opportunity to either hire people or to get a job detail out of it some of the key innovative stuff about aws user group madurai as i talk about network and learn there are people experts there out of it right you can learn from them uh, job hiring certification there are many such opportunities you get around it content wise we do have different forms of events that takes place offline on our slack channel like talks we have blogs video reels and more uh, as i mentioned in the previous slide this community is for zero to hero so if you are even a beginner just know about aws none of the services out of it still this user group is for you or you are the expert still this user group is for you it's from zero to hero we pro we supports all different regional language like english tamil or any other one and swags as you get it as you participate uh like in this boot camp or other event will get different form of swags as well as vouchers as per the decided thing the link is here you can join us bit.ly join aws mgu this is our slack workspace link and we do also have presence on other social media instagram linkedin facebook and uh twitter twitch youtube do follow us aws user group madurai which is at the rate aws ug mdu uh mdu we do have slack as our main channel but this are other presence so do subscribe and get notification for our next event so that's all from my end we'll open for any sorts of questions and queries if you have so please if you have any questions and queries put it in the chat monish or an or i i'll be happy to answer them we'll take a couple of a minute or two if you have no questions then we can wrap up otherwise please post the questions in a chat cool i think we are good here uh, thanks monish for spending your time from your evening i think we don't have any questions from the audience uh it seems like your teaching was very good yeah i liked it a lot sitting at the backstage so we are good for this session thank you for joining audience uh, and yeah please do subscribe us please do follow our slack channel and other social media platform we'll surely announce our next session very soon so please do subscribe and i i'll see you soon in the next session thank you for joining have a wonderful evening ahead yeah thank you thank you thank you